Still watching the AM show on Joy News on Multi TV. I am Daniel Daze, and welcome to you, Mama V. Owusu Abwaji. Well, good morning. Thanks for holding it down. Wow. Uh, very yeah. unusual situation on the Pokwasi Road this morning. Wow. I, there was a, a message yesterday that there, there had been a, a gas explosion. Yes. But that turned out not to be true. I mean, I okay. thought it was a hoax. No explosion. However, a vehicle has turned wrongly onto one stretch of the road, an entire stretch. Wow. So that caused very heavy traffic. Even At 5 a.m.? Yeah. 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 So I anticipate if they don't move, move these tracks, it will be crazy this morning on that stretch. Some yeah. will say, you won't pay the toll anymore. So <laughs> I have to tow their cars off. Yeah. No, but seriously, they, it shouldn't have stayed there for that long. Exactly. Yeah, because... Um, even with the legislation that works, the police should be able to look at it immediately yeah. and have the towing services. I didn't see any towing truck, though. I saw uh, a few people maybe trying to figure out how they're going to move the, uh, those tracks. I think it was two tracks I saw. Mm. Uh, so we'll see how that goes. Uh, yeah, but I think it's a situation we should monitor. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Definitely we have uh, to monitor. Sure that, um, if you live in Pokwasi, this is... This is a little after the overhead, after okay. John Tay. Okay. okay. Yeah. Mm. So if you're coming from Amasama, um, Kuntunse, where I came from this morning, you probably want to use the back if you're very familiar and use uh, West, you know, the Kwabenya Road. Okay. But it means that you have to leave home really early. Otherwise, you'll be in heavy traffic, even on that stretch as well. Wow. That's a long stretch. Yeah, because a lot of people are diverting onto that road. Yes. And so you'd be, naturally, you'd, you'd find but that. But the other thing is, if you're patient enough and you stay in it, uh, the main road should take you to work safely. Yeah. I mean, immediately after you cross that obstruction, yeah. it should be... It's smooth. It should be smooth. Yeah. Okay. Um, it's good to have you here. Right? <laughs> <laughs> it's good to have you here on the show. <laughs> it's good to be here. Yeah. Okay, so let's look at the newspapers this morning and um, so many issues making rounds. I am particularly curious. Okay, you start with the Daily Graphic. I'm pretty curious about what's on the front page of the Finder. But the Daily Graphic says uh, it's behind you. Yeah, sure. Uh, so front page of the Daily Graphic newspaper. Uh, very heartbreaking news from yesterday. A man who lived his entire life really with us, gave us a lot of insights into mm. uh, Kwame Nkrumah's administration, particularly in the man. KB Asante passes on. He died Sunday morning in his la home. Uh, details of that, that angle, the paper is reporting in the Daily Graphic newspaper today. But we will I, miss I him a lot. I like his articles, Voice from Afar. Yeah. Yeah, and, and it was, he had some really, really interesting perspectives to all the issues that were happening. Yeah. yeah. We'll miss him a lot, but we know he lived his entire life with us. So he lived a very good life. May he his soul rest in peace. Police round up suspects in search of Kwabenya gunmen escapees, but we're told that they have not made any specific arrests with regards to that incident, the freeing of those uh, suspects in cells at the Kwabenya police station. So we keep an eye on this situation as well. So Kumasi, what does round up suspects mean if they haven't made arrests? Well, you know, you. I have a feeling that the police, if they really want to look for criminals, they know where to find them. <laughs> yes, they know where to find them. You know why I ask this question? <laughs> because, I mean, lawyer Isankoma has made this point time and time again, that when the police is investigating, they go out... They pick a lot of people that yeah. they suspect and they come back and they come and look through yeah. them and see which one is which. So it's as if they arrest before they investigate, which I don't think should be the case because you end up picking a lot of innocent people. I mean, it's, whenever there's a swoop on a neighborhood suspected of having a lot of drug dealers, for instance, you end up picking a lot of people, mm -hmm. infringing on their rights, keeping them in prison, well, in remand for longer than usual before you actually begin looking through. So it's not something I'm very comfortable with. Yeah. But then... Um, well, but if you look at our situation, we have a peculiar situation in Ghana mm. uh, where you can't easily tell where somebody lives. So under the circumstance where you can't easily search for someone, even if you had information on them, this is... <laughs> and this has worked for them in, uh, in some cases. Except for the way they identify the people. Like they call citizens and they say come and identify. And, sometimes and they parade them afraid. in the open and the citizens just come in. Exactly. So that's the thing. But we're told there was a police officer who escaped. So right. he pretty much 
may have seen a few of them, so he could identify them uh, if they, but they know where the criminals are. If they really <laughs> want to get them, they can. And I guess that's the mission that they're on. Uh, still on the front page of the Daily Graphic newspaper, Kumasi selected to host Cancer Project. And no way, Auditor General reject 269 million Ghana cities energy spending. Details of that, I'll bring you uh, a bit of that. That's on page three. So the Auditor General has rejected a 269 million Ghana cities bill presented by the Ministry of Energy as part of the government's liability for various contracts undertaken by the ministry back in 2016. An audit of the government's liabilities to ministries, departments and agencies shows that almost all the bills on various contracts presented to the government for payments by the ministry did not either have supporting document to back the claims or had already been paid. So a yet to be released Auditor General's report on MDAs liabilities as of December 2016, a copy of which is available to the Daily Graphic, shows that there were no documents to support the payment of 269 million Ghana cities to various supplies to the Energy Ministry. What does this all mean? They've got a lot more details to so the story. So 269 million yeah. Ghana cities has been paid and yes. there are no supporting documents. Exactly. In, wow. in the absence of that, it means that it's in somebody's pockets. <laughs> well, the majority at least. Is. I mean, yeah. um, you can. You know, the Daily Statesman also has a similar a story on the uh, Energy Ministry's uh, scrutiny, well, the Auditor General scrutiny of the Energy Ministry, and it says here, Ghana saved 132 million um, Ghana cities fraud. Here on the front page, uh, it says, an audit conducted by the Naneko Fadu administration has revealed a whopping sum of 131,958,407.51 Ghana cities could have gone to the dogs at the baton of government and not changed in December 2016. So it says, very interesting words here. In yet another litany of fraud associated with the exited NDC administration under John Mahama, the watchful new administration has succeeded in saving the nation an amount of 132 million Ghana cities with regards to claims that the government owed the energy ministry. Hmm. Sometimes the way they write the, <laughs> the, the stories, it makes you wonder. Um, because it seems pretty conclusive that you know someone has stolen something. And this government has saved us money, but we still need to look after exactly what the AG brought out. It still needs to be investigated. You know, mm. um, thanks to the great work that Occupy Ghana did, um, they can now issue a disallowance and surcharge. They are now willing to do that, and we'll see if that money can be paid back. So, uh, interesting days ahead with regards to the Auditor General's reports. Okay, uh, back in the graphic, didn't quite run through the stories I wanted to. So in the center spread of the graphic newspaper, there's Georgia taking office as Liberia's president and our president, Ekufuado, two former presidents, Rawlings and Mahama were also there. So you find them in the picture. This is one of those papers that you've got to grab and keep. It tells uh, a lot of history. So Judge, we are promising there uh, not to fail the citizens of Liberia. We'll mm. see how that goes. I mean, it's, it's excitement in the beginning. Mm -hmm. You say all the nice things, but being president is hard, is different, mm. is not a campaign, is <laughs> not like a political <laughs> something. Uh, so we wish him well, really, Georgia, really, president really. of Liberia. Quickly yeah. on the back page of the graphic, uh, there's the Kumasi selected to host the cancer project. A bit of that says the Minister of Health, Mr. Kwekwajima Menu, has announced that the Union for International Cancer Control and the World Cancer Leaders Summit have selected the Kumasi Metropolis to host the UICC project in Africa is dubbed Kumasi City Cancer Project. Uh, the Kumasi Center will be supported by the uh, international organizations and local entities to design and implement sustainable cancer care solutions. Uh, and details, the rest of that on the back page. Also, BA cashew farmers assisted to spray pests uh, following the recent invasion of pests identified as aeroplane and mosquito bags that have been t uh, attacking cashew farms in the Bonohaf region, the Cashew Industry Association of Ghana, in collaboration with the Ghana Export Promotion Authority, has presented insecticide motor spray machines and chemicals to cashew farmers in the Jamai North and South districts in the region. Are they spraying for free? If you're a farmer uh, whose farm is being sprayed, I want to hear from you. Are they 
uh, charging you for this praying because uh, at least the beginning of this article, this news doesn't it doesn't say exactly. Yeah, it's that. not very clear yeah. on that. Right. So, uh, done with the graphic? Yes, I am true with the Daily Graphic okay, newspaper. Okay, then. Well, I sort of took a bite of the Daily Statesman. All anyway. right. So, let's um, look at that immediately. So, I've talked about that story that's also on the front page of the graphic. Energy Ministry under scrutiny. Ghana saved 132 million Ghana cities fraud. Also, it has a picture of Mustafa Hamid by the byline. Government committed to equip police service. This is... Um, one of those stories that I'm sure we'll be looking at today, this issue of security and the safety of police personnel, mm -hmm. it's really come up this this past few days, again, yeah. what has been happening. And um, yesterday on News Desk, we had, uh, we played, well, I don't want to say SOT on <laughs> <laughs> So when we say SOT, I mean, we played an interview with, with so there the was a, officer. So there was a police officer who was sharing... Yeah. Uh, his candid opinion, yeah. you know, coming yeah. all out. Uh, it's interesting. I, I, I had a suggestion yesterday that the police station should have guard dogs. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> interesting. But Wall you know, the place and have guard dogs in there so when they come, just unleash them. But, you know, speaking of setup of police stations, normally what we have... Uh, um, w what we have are two officers behind the counter. Yeah. The armory is not by them, and they are not armed. Uh, IGP John Kudalo brought up this rule that there should be another armed officer in every station. Okay. And there are some stations that are also attached to barracks so that if there's any trouble, there's any rockers, they can easily get back up. So the question I think that should come up is, are these armed officers there? Because even with Inspector Shelevi, who was shot, um, unfortunately, a couple of days ago, he was not stationed at Kwabenya. He was on his routine inspection. Exactly. Uh, but he yes. was the armed officer there. So if he had not been there, what would have happened? Would things have, you know, so it's, it's a lot of questions about the setup. Yeah. Of, and I don't really like discussing security systems on air because they say you're giving out information to Oh, but that's the only may. way we can have a national conversation. Because uh, if, we, if we leave it and we don't talk about it, then the police would continue to be under-resourced. It's only when we talk about it that we give, we give that also a certain you voice. You took the so. words out of my mouth. So we can talk about yeah, it to some to. extent. <laughs> exactly. uh, but the question is, who is policing the police? Mm. Who is policing the police? Mm. And it's well, um, the Daily Statesman also has some details of the Auditor General's report on MDA liabilities after 31st December 2016. If you look on uh, page 6 of the Daily Statesman will have some more details of that. Um, Guineans wishing Baumia well, in interesting. That's the letters and opinions section of Daily Statesman. Ghanaians just wishing Baumia well. So you want to wish him well, you want to know how people are wishing him well. <laughs> well, you they, say, they the say that's the typical uh, Ghanaian thing. Yeah. When somebody's not well, yeah. we don't ask uh, what is wrong with you. We wish yeah. you well. So I guess that's what they're coming <laughs> from. Yeah. Well, okay, go ahead. Uh, all right, let's do the Ghanaian Times newspaper. And on the front page of the Ghanaian Times, this day, AMA lifts ban on out-of-home advertising. KB Asante passes on. Bank of Ghana warns public against Bitcoin. And Kwabenya deadly attack. Jailbreak police officer... Uh, f uh, no, police offer 15,000 Ghana cities bounty for arrest of fugitives. So if you have any information, good information that would lead to an arrest of any of these guys who stormed the Kwabenya police station, the police is promising you uh, a nice figure of 15,000 Ghana cities. It's 23rd of January, isn't it? Yes. Yeah, it would do you a lot of good. I mean, it's uh, a trust good Trust me, a lot of people of are broke in January. <laughs> I mean, so. today is 23rd. Yeah. So officially, we have about 20 more days in January. To <laughs> <go>. <laughs> I mean, people have been saying that January has about 100 days in there. Yeah, so. it does. It does. <laughs> Especially and, after And that. for those of us who are not getting the 13th month salary, that's a seriously hard one. You know? You know yeah. Yeah. All right, let's go but to page know, 17. Speaking of money, the Bank of Ghana warning the public against Bitcoin. Yeah. 
very interesting one. Okay, that's on page 17. I'm that's sure that's the bit. That's, yeah, that's, that's where I'm interested Mama in. Mama and I are so in sync this morning. <laughs> <It's funky. laughs> it's, uh, you know, the, the whole Bitcoin thing is there was one big curious case. It's almost like uh, Benjamin Button, if you like. So the government of uh, the Bank of Ghana, the governor of the Bank of Ghana, Dr. Ernest Addison, has urged uh, edged caution. Which one should we use, Times? Mm -hmm. uh, in the use of Bitcoin for financial transactions in the country. Uh, Bitcoin is a cryptocurrency and worldwide payment system. It is the first decentralized digital currency as the system works without a central bank or single administrator. I want to fast forward to, okay, so according to Dr. Addison, the current payment system laws did not recognize Bitcoin as a legal tender and as a result could not be used in any form of payments in the country. He said the new payment systems bill currently laid before Parliament, if approved, would highlight all other modern forms of payment systems in line with changing uh, the growing technological means of payment. So uh, he was responding to calls according to the story by sections of the public for Ghana to invest in Bitcoin due to its recent rise in returns at a press briefing of the 80th regular meeting of the Monetary Policy Committee of the Bank of Ghana in Accra yesterday. Uh, Do you know how much you? a Bitcoin is worth? It's Over a thousand? It's now $11,000. Oh! Bitcoin. And it's, it's gone low. <laughs> Like when it went to eleven thousand, people are made because it, it hits a peak of thirteen thousand. Yeah. This last year, and so the and the rate of rise. If you look at the track, the the way um, uh, the graph yeah. is what I want to say. It's unbelievable. The rate at which it grew just in 2017, 2016 into twenty seventeen. Like you're saying, it's unbelievable. Yeah. And you know, the only thing is that I was telling my friends yesterday, it looks too much like a bubble. Like. <laughs> You know how I was reading there. about mm. a Ghanaian who uh, who's invested in it, like who is trading with it, something like that. Mama V, I yeah. know, I know investment clubs built on Bitcoin here in Ghana. Uh, really? Oh yes. Oh wow. Oh yes. Actually, a, a friend of mine showed. Would me. you go into it? I mean, would you? You should ask me. Have I gone into it? Oh, <laughs> oh you have. <laughs> no, actually, you have. No. Oh, no, you're I, a risk I, I think, taker. No, no. I, I, I was, I was, I was pointing you to that question because. It just shows that a lot more people are looking at it than they okay. have, than, than we think. Yeah. And no, I haven't. The answer, the answer really I think is it's no, all. It's also because of social media. It's, mm -hmm. it's because of the digital world, mm -hmm. uh, where people even know music before you played for the first time on air. Exactly. You think you're playing music for the first time. Somebody's been listening to it uh, in their in their Folks. private <laughs> exactly. So people know about these things even before traditional media. Exactly, about it. exactly. Yeah. Social media is setting the agenda more and more exactly. nowadays. And that is what actually what happened with Bitcoin, yeah. where a lot of people were trading in it online. Yeah. I actually, so I actually know this person who funded his entire wedding in December with, with cryptocurrency. So the thing of, Exactly. So the thing about cryptocurrency is that people actually buy and sell with, those, with this currency already online. So it's, there's no paper... But Bitcoin. how does that translate to real Ghana CDs? Exactly. So there are exchanges. There are online exchanges where you can buy currency with Bitcoins or any other cryptocurrency. Most of the time, you have to convert that cryptocurrency into Bitcoins itself, which is like the most popular, the largest. Then you'd convert it to dollars. But I, I, there are systems out there, I'm sure, mm -hmm. that you can bypass that. Usually, you are able to get dollars with cryptocurrency and then convert to CDs. And the exchange rates for CD to dollar on the online cryptocurrency market is a little higher than the regular. So you make some good money. Yeah. Ooh, well, you if you're a risk taker, money. the Bank of Ghana has told you. They've told you that our systems don't support that. Exactly. It's not legal tender in Ghana, but people take a risk anyway, irrespective yeah. of what the Bank of Ghana says. So, yeah. But if you do, it's on your head. Exactly. Alone. <laughs> <laughs> but if you make a lot of money, Listen, share. <laughs> <laughs> I can uh, give you, I can put on my email address on my Twitter handle. You can, you know. Yeah? Be kind. <laughs> <laughs> you, you won't take the risk. Somebody should no. take the risk and be kind to you. <laughs> All right, so um, let me move to the Finder newspaper. I thought you did the Finder. No? Nope. Um, well, I, I mentioned this oh, story okay. earlier. Uh, 48 cops killed in the line of duty since 2013. Oh, wow. 15 murdered by armed robbers and unidentified gunmen. 
Um, that's one of the major headlines there. Um, so let me go to that one. It's on page 11 and continues on page 16. So one thing I love about what the finder does is that it breaks it down into years. So mm -hmm. there were four officers who died in 2018. Four died in the past 23 days. Um, the most recent being Inspector Emmanuel Ashilevi, who was killed on Sunday, January 21, when armed men numbering about six attacked the Kwabinya police station at dawn. Also, General Lance Corporal Danso Enimon, and um, he was killed Friday dawn. He's with the Cape Coast Operations Unit. He was killed Friday dawn when he was run over and dragged under a cargo truck for almost 40 meters at a snap checkpoint mm. at Goma Abotia in the central region. It gives the details and how all of these officers died. 11 officers died in 2014. And Mamavi, it's quite worrying if you are a police officer and you don't feel safe. I wonder how citizens should feel if police officers don't well, feel safe. Well, but I, I, I want to believe that all the security personnel know what they, they're getting themselves into. So they're not, that's why they're not like us, ordinary. That's why we say we're ordinary Ghanaians, but they are security officers, they are police, they are army, they are prisons. It means that the risk that they take on as citizens of Ghana is way higher than us. But do they? They, are, they have a responsibility of protecting us, and their immediate interest does not come first. It's the country's interest that comes first. But, but do they know what they're getting themselves into? Because, I mean, Article 200 to 203 of the Constitution defines what governments must do that government that a country must have a police service it mm. says governments a country must have a well-equipped police service so a lot of these officers will go into the police thinking okay so at least i'm going to have the basic protective equipment that i need i'm going to have weapons i'm going to have uh, communications devices i'm going to have uh, bulletproof what, what what whatever they need but they go into the service and they realize they don't have these things so and it's still a bit of a shock for some of these officers yesterday this officer that uh, we had uh, was telling us about you know, some basic implements that they mm. need that they don't have. Remember, it's not just about those who were killed. Just about a couple of days ago, a few days ago, in Tema, someone was being chased by armed robbers and he tried to seek refuge at a police checkpoint. The police realized there were armed robbers coming and he ran away. Yeah. And left the man there to his fate. Uh, thankfully, he did not lose his life. He lost his property, but um, in Kwani here. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. Some of these stories just kind of uh, it makes you sad. It breaks you down. But there are some instances where the police has also uh, been really good. Of course. And, I mean, this and is I, not I down to their inefficiency. I, yeah, I, don't I get think it. That is it. But uh, in some instances, that's why it gets so worrying when they are recruiting and you find so many people. Because then you ask yourself, are all these people passionate about the job? Or they're getting into it because they they haven't found any other any, job to exactly. Do. So mm. this is like the last resort for mm. them. Uh, we know that they are under resourced. Sometimes we really want to hear from their leaders as well. So if the IGP, for instance, would tell us the real challenges that they face, mm. once citizens begin to also speak, then government is forced to do what they are supposed to do. But where you have Leadership of these security forces, sadly, nobody wanting to speak because you feel that you'll be victimized or you'll lose your job, then we'll be where we are. Because if you look at what has happened, if you look at our history, when people speak, when they speak, if we're going into an election, an electoral commissioner says that we don't have this, we don't have this, government would quickly organize. Anything it takes. Exactly, because that's the electoral commissioner. And that's the electoral commission and they organize elections and if exactly. the election is not credible because we didn't find a particular material it would bring it would question the outcome of that election so exactly. they take it serious mm. if we have bold we just need we so just need saying. very vocal bold people i mean we talk about kb asante today uh, and and his pass on may his soul rest in peace but we know that he was a bold man a man who who never feared to speak Mm. You know, and, and that's the kind of people that we, we need in Ghana today. We Mama need B, people me, who speak. Let me, throw in, let me throw in a question. I, I really don't know what you think about this. You know, in the UK, gun violence is very low because guns are totally banned. Even the police don't use guns. In America, on the, in the, on the other hand, gun violence is really high. Mm -hmm. We have mass shootings and a lot of people call for banning of guns totally. In Ghana, about nine, over 92% of our guns are locally made. 
Do you think that it's time for us to look at something like that? Ban As in banning? Ban totally. So yeah. that even the police don't use it? I doubt. Mm. Because the systems, we haven't worked on our systems. We mm. don't have... We don't a way have, to check. Them. Exactly. So mm. we need to work on our systems. I know that the Small Arms uh, Commission makes appeals for people to... If you're not licensed, you don't have to have a gun. If you, if you need a gun, and there are some people who absolutely must have a gun because we also have to protect ourselves as individuals. But if you must have a gun, it must be through the right processes. I don't think we've gotten to the point where we have to talk about banning yet. Mm. We mm. have to check our systems first. Mm. Anything, yeah. anything that has to be rolled out like that will have to be stepwise anyway. Yeah. So maybe we can get to a point like that later in the future. We don't have an excellent system. Well. Mm. We don't. Ghana, the beloved country. Okay, we spent a lot of time on the finder, so let me just run you through the rest of the headlines and then we'll move on. Uh, Dr. Baumia will resume, will be better. Dr. Baumia is better and will resume work soon, according to the minister, the minister being Mustafa Hamid. Uh, he has that story of George Weir's, um, George Weir's inauguration there. Uh, and private sector to drive industrial parks. That's all on the front page of the finder. Get yourself a finder. And you can look at that, Marvi. Let's do the Daily Guide newspaper, front page of the guide. It says, Iyoko class EC top officials. Iyoko, I've been counting down. That showdown you did at the Electoral Commission, <laughs> the 14 days. How many days into that 14 days? Uh, but look at this headline that we have on the front page of the, uh, the Daily Guide this morning. I'm um, curious. So let's quickly go to page three exactly. and six. Uh, it says, it has emerged that the three top officers accused of misappropriating 480,177.87 Ghana CDs uh, of the endowment fund of staff of Electoral Commission have been cleared by the Economic and Organized Crime Office. Uh, George Nopokwa Bankwa, Deputy Commissioner in Charge of Finance and Administration, Kweku Owusu Eje Labi, Chief Accountant, and Joseph Kweku, a Samoa Finance Officer, were hounded out of office by the Yoko on the instructions of the EC Chairperson Charlotte Hosei over the alleged malfeasance and their continuous absence from office is beginning to raise eyebrows since nothing was found mm. against any of them. Okay, it gives you a background to the recently, but I'm interested in the... The showdown. I, th I think this is as a result of the showdown. Remember, they agreed yeah. that in 14 days, investigations will be concluded. So Eoko is trying to look good or what? <laughs> like, I don't get it. This issue is out of your hands. The Chief Justice is already exactly. dealing with the matter. Exactly. Uh, and who are you, Iyoko, when Chief Justice is handling mm. something, really? <laughs> so what you're trying to say is full bundle. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just saying that this matter is out of the executive. So please, step away. Eh? Let the judiciary do its bits. Mm. And let's get to a proper conclusion of this matter. <laughs> Especially I'm so because to... it says a lot about the independence of the Electoral Commission. If they are left and the Chief Justice is left to do its job. I yeah. think that one of the arms of government that has trust of the public is the judiciary. Yeah. And, and yeah. Let's, let's leave them to do their work. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, uh, the continuation of the story, I can't even... Okay, it's here. Six. It just gives you the background, 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 then AG's report. So Daily Guide has cited an official report from the AG's department indicating that the affected officers might not have anything to do with the alleged malfeasance and that it is rather two others who could be charged if there was any action to be taken in the matter. Hmm. I don't even want to read further. <laughs> the report is dated January 10, 2018. indicates that the focus of the Yoko investigation hmm. was on Samuel York Adu, the then director of finance, as well as Ishmael Pensa, a former chief accountant who no longer works with the Electoral Commission. Again, what was that showdown about, about. Yoko? Ow. Anyway, you know uh, what I pointed out to you earlier about police picking up so many people? Yeah. And then trying to pick out, look at the front page of the Daily Guide. 200 nap over Kwabenya police raid. So mm. you pick up 200 people yeah, and then try and arrest six. Then they would seep through. Oh, yeah. Anyway. Uh, center spread. Uh, we've got to do the center spread. That's the last newspaper we'll do, by the way, and then yep. we'll go online. Yep. Uh, Lydia Forsen punched by National Security Officer. 
Uh, wow. the, yeah, the, uh, the, the faces of these two, there's a policeman and then the national security operative, uh, they're all captured here. Yeah, all right, that's what's on your screen. So if you were following, if you were on social media heavily yesterday, then you would have probably seen a video making the round uh, confrontation between Lydia Forsen and her team as they went to uh, a part of cantonment. I think it's not too far from Nafti, either that stretch or a stretch mm. close to that, trying to make a movie, you know, make a film. Oh. And then, you know, this officer uh, said they couldn't, and the exchanges thereafter. And I think it comes back to how some, sometimes officers speak to us. And exactly. I had such an encounter uh, at Confanochi when we went there. Uh, you know, to commission the project. And I had to speak out. You know, sometimes they just, they want to just I mean, give you it's, like... It's not assault if an officer punches. I it's as if what they say is final. Like, you don't even have a say. Like, they just want to give you an order. Ah. You know, like, yeah, because I'm the police officer. Yeah, because I'm the security operative. Like, I work with national security. Really? You, you know, you know speak how... Speak to people as when human you, beings. When you meet a plain clothes person and he says, I work with national security, that's supposed to end the argument. Like, <laughs> <laughs> so, there anyway, are some um, nice national security operatives. They are so sweet. And there are others who are horrible. Like, they see you and they want to ha-ha their eyes on you as if... So this, you I know, like one of those things. Ha -ha yeah, if they had gone about it in a different way, exactly. I think it wouldn't have resulted in that. Now right. their faces are here. We'll see what uh, those who sent them. them, those who supervised them, would do beyond what has gone viral. Right, mm. let's uh, go online now. Yeah. Um, very quickly take a look at some of the stories making news online. My Joy Online um, is a race for seats in this rural school. Um, and then Pani Primary is School, a story Is it Pani? Or is yeah. it like Pandai? No, it's, well, okay, let, the let, school it was in Pani um, Rural School. Yeah, I think it's the fourth one. Let, let's just start, start from the beginning. We'll get there. Yeah, unapproved settlement on Ghana, Togo border, a time bomb, um, uh, Keta MCE. Remember this issue came up after we del delineated our borders with yes. La Côte d'Ivoire. Okay, let's move on. Baumier's UK Medical Leave exposes poor investments in the health sector. Ghana Medical Association says that. Uh, what's the next one? AU gears up to launch highly anticipated single African sky. Okay, the single African air transport market. Mama, we, we could have a two-hour conversation about this. Thing. <laughs> <laughs> we could, but we, we, have, we simply don't have the time. Let's, let's move on. Um, okay, yes, so that's, that's it. Let me look at it on the other side. So in Pani Primary School. Okay, so in the, in the Pandai area. district, yes, okay. it's, it's in the Pandai district, yeah. So they don't have seats, okay, so you see, oh, you can count, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, what, you, they're sharing what? One bench. No, but this is what the carpenters use. Exactly. This is not even, wow. We will tell you the full story uh, yeah. later on. It's a heartbreaking one, even just from the picture that you see, just from the picture that is on myjawline.com. Wow, incredible. Hmm. M MP, the MP for the area will be on you this morning. Get ready. Uh, Honorable Matthew uh -huh. Good morning. Yeah. He's the he's deputy in leadership. majority whip. Exactly. He's in leadership position in parliament. He's a very powerful man. He could fix this in a twinkle of an eye. We'll be on you. Honorable. Ghana has lost a true statesman, Rawlings, Mons, KB Asante. I agree with you, Mr. Rawlings. We have lost a true statesman. Let's move on. And... Um, 35.9 million Ghana cities released for second term free SHS. My question here is we had, okay, so we had 20% of the funds released um, at the beginning of the free SHS module being rolled out. Is this the 80% or this is the second term? What does it mean? Lots of questions. Yeah, we're going into the details of that. Stop Carlos demand for V health status. No, no, no. Did you listen to his interview? It I did, so I did. But I think it makes, also makes a lot of sense, uh, the argument that, you shouldn't have given us those medical, you shouldn't have used medical in the first place. Just he's taking a leave. And that would have stopped people from asking all these questions. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Um, okay. Even more know. importantly, people saying, okay, so the facilities we have in Ghana, the doctors that we have in Ghana, all the specialists we have at Kolebu 37, Konfuanoche, nobody Please, could have Mustafa treated Hamid. that. What good happens morning. to us, those who can't mm -hmm. go out? When we are sick. No. Good morning, Mr. Mustafa Hamid. <laughs> Mr. Mustafa Hamid says that we will go and visit the president too much. 
<laughs> the vice president too much. So. That, that one is another matter. <laughs> we'll deal with that. Uh, Come so. here, Joe. We require from the seat policeman on state to help in raising kids. Yeah, that's really, really important. Uh, yeah. Wasn't uh, the Major Mahama fund? Was the Major Mahama fund for just him or it was for everyone? It was him. It was just All him. right, we'll come back. We'll have lots of conversations here on the show. Uh, because of time, we have to end it here and make way for sport. Benedict also Dankwa is up next. He's got detailed sport. And I'm excited. Uh, the Australian Open is very much still on. The finals for the ladies is on Saturday. Uh, but some powerful people have been have booted been. out. Benedict mm. has got the details. But my favorite is still in there. He's still standing still. <laughs> Stay with us.